The Opryland Hotel, a remarkable place you'll never forget. It's a special hotel in a very special city. Nashville, Tennessee, the bedrock of America, the home of country music. The Opryland Hotel welcomes you with warmth and charm. It's happy and comfortable here. It's inviting. This is more than just a hotel, it's a family. That's truly the feeling and atmosphere at Opryland. From the moment you arrive here, you're treated to genuine Southern hospitality by sincere people who care about you. How you folks doing today? Great. At Opryland, check-in is a pleasure, not a hassle. There are an amazing 29 check-in stations, more than any hotel in America. And everywhere you turn, there's Southern charm. Hi, how are y'all doing? Did you check in? First day? Uh, good, good. You been in your room? Everything okay? One of the real secrets to our service here is that the majority of our employees are native Tennesseans, and they're basically friendly. They're just nice people. The people in this uh, area, uh, their values are come, come through to our guests. People. Good afternoon, people. That's the reason the Opryland Hotel is special. People uh, like Fast Eddie Stewart. Welcome to Opryland Hotel. Is this y'all's first visit with us? It is? Okay, if you wait right here, I'll get your luggage. I'll be by, right back. Like everyone here, Eddie Stewart tries to do a little extra. He doesn't just take your bags to the room. He gives you a guided tour on the way. Our restaurant here, entrance is up on the right here. Its hours are from 6.30 a.m. until 11 at night. They cover a wide variety menu. Eddie Stewart's philosophy isn't fancy or complicated. It's simply based on care for the customer. Actually, I treat them the way I wish to be treated. If I were coming and spending my hard-earned money for a night's visit. From the very minute that we drove up, we were treated so uh, courteously. Uh, and all the employees have tried to make us feel welcome. We've really enjoyed it here. I want the employees to feel like the guests are guests in their own homes. And I think that comes across when they're talking with the guests, when they're dealing with their everyday chores. The people here are great. But this hotel is even more than that. It's one of the biggest, most beautiful, most exciting hotels in the country. It's a place where something is always happening, where there are more places to have fun than you can possibly imagine. It's an experience. It's a happening. It's the Opryland Hotel. Beauty, tranquility, a refuge from life's problems. It's all part of the marvelous ambiance at Opryland. When you leave the front lobby, you enter a world that's hard to believe. It's called the Cascades. There's nothing like it anywhere. It's covered by a one-acre skylight, one of the largest glass roofs in the world. When you're in the Cascades, it's like being outside in a beautiful plaza on a wonderful day. I think it's a great environment. Uh, having a chance to stay in one of the garden terrace rooms uh, and being able to come out on the patio and listen to the water and the music and being able to see the lush tropical growth uh, definitely makes you feel like you're in kind of a, of a, of a paradise type situation. Uh, I think uh, most of the people enjoy it tremendously and want to come back. On one end, the Cascades is dominated by a 40-foot mountain punctuated by three waterfalls and a glorious variety of plant life. The mountain is so steep that gardeners can't crawl down to check the plants. Instead, they're trained to rappel down like mountain climbers. They work in pairs, one on top of the mountain, making sure the rope is safe, while the other rappels slowly, checking the plants as she goes. They communicate constantly. The gardeners go down the mountain to check the rock pockets, which are planters in a sense right in the side of the mountain. And in those planters, besides the plant material, we also have irrigation lines. So when we turn on the automatic irrigation, they have to go down and make sure it's running. They have to go down occasionally and prune the plants or put some new color in, in certain ones of the pockets. All this can be viewed from an elevated promenade that literally tunnels through the mountain. 
There are also places to sit and relax. For example, the Cascades Terrace is a revolving lounge surrounded by a beautiful lake stocked with colorful fish. On the other side of the lake is the Cascades Restaurant amid many of the 8,000 plants that make this whole area a tropical paradise. It's relaxing. Hearing the waterfall is, um, it, it just makes you, gives you a good feeling and you feel like you can relax and enjoy and, and just have a good time. And then there are the Dancing Waters, a series of magical fountains controlled by computers. They create a special mood during the day, but at night, the real show begins. His name is Lloyd Lindroth, and his harp brings the Cascades alive six nights a week. He's accompanied by the Dancing Waters, only now they're even more glorious, darting about in a laser light show that's one of the top attractions in Nashville. It's all a romantic atmosphere, one that's led to some unusual experiences for Lloyd Lindroth. I have played for over 24 couples that have propo proposed marriage in front of my harp and me. In fact, one boy was so nervous that he asked me if I would do the proposal for him. <laughs> Another, our first uh, proposal, our marriage proposal, we gave them a, a honeymoon suite, my boss did but it's so romantic. It all puts you in a mood of romance and love, and I don't think there's a place in the world or a hotel in the world that has the romantic feeling that this beautiful Cascades in the hotel has. Where are you from, Ron? I'm from the restaurant. Like most of the entertainers at Opryland, Lloyd visits with the people after his show. Well, our whole philosophy here is to be down home and to be friendly, and there's not an employee in our hotel that doesn't go overboard. We really pick people that enjoy working and loving people. It's amazing that any hotel has something as unique as the Cascades. But can you imagine another area just as special, just as distinctive, right in the same hotel? Well, guess what? Right in Opryland, just a minute's walk from the Cascades, is another natural paradise called the conservatory. Only here, there are even more plants and trees, again covered by a giant glass roof with guest rooms on all sides. The mood here is European, reminiscent of the 19th century, when conservatories were favorite gathering places for the people of Europe. There are places to sit quietly and think, or possibly read a book. There are paths to walk, all surrounded by exotic plant life, rocky coves, and gentle waterfalls. It's, uh, it's not only peaceful, it's kind of fun, because you get to meander about, and uh, people are talking about the different places they can go in the hotel, and listen to them, and walk over that way, and listen to the waterfalls, and enjoy the plants, and the friendly people. It's, it's, it's really relaxing. It's a great meeting place for the conventioneers, because they get a chance to meet some of the people they only see once a year, maybe. Get a chance to talk. They might have a drink and, and walk around the, the, uh, the walkways and through the garden. And just gives them a great experience. And the conservatory is much more than just a garden area. There's country music here every night in the lounge area, just outside Rhett's Restaurant. And you like country music, huh? Oh, love it, love it. Great country people. We've had a lot of folks from New York. Yeah. I'm surprised how big country music is in New York. Oh, it's big. On any given night, you'll find live country music all over the hotel, especially in the night spots, like the Jack Daniels Saloon, the Stage Door Lounge, and the Pickin' Parlor. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to Upperland Hotel. How are y'all doing today? These are great places to unwind to kick up your heels and have fun after a long day of convention meetings or sightseeing. And when you're hungry, there are five different restaurants here at Opryland. The most elegant is the Old Hickory Restaurant. 
Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Old Hickory. Would you like to follow me, please? The Old Hickory is the perfect spot for a quiet evening with some fine wine and perfect cuisine. But if that's not your pleasure, our other restaurants offer almost any kind of dish you may want. It's all part of Opryland's effort to serve the customer, to find new ways to make this hotel special. Uh, we've done a lot of traveling, and uh, the, we, this is the second time that we've been to this hotel, and this just ranks right up there at the top of any place we've ever been. It's just incredible. It's doubled in size since the last time we were here. Every time we come back, there's just something new that we haven't seen before, and this time they've added so many nice shops and the restaurants, and it's just great. And all those restaurants are serviced by an operation few people ever see. Put me some more cream in, please. Just put it in here, open it. This is executive chef Richard Gerst, the man who heads the entire kitchen operation at Opryland. He is preparing a specialty for one of the restaurants. He's also working with three apprentice chefs, teaching them the subtle art of fine cooking. It's part of an ongoing effort to develop talented young chefs, people who learn to cook the right way. I always try them to use, try to tell them to use the best possible uh, products available. I also tell them if they wouldn't want to eat it, don't serve it. Chef Gerst speaks from experience. He's worked in hotels throughout the world, perfecting nearly every dish imaginable. Uh, I did my apprenticeship in uh, Stuttgart, Bad Cannstatt, in Kursaal restaurant for three years. I went to the hotel school in Bad Überkingen in Germany. After that, I did one year of commie work in Munich, Germany. And from there, I went to Neuchâtel in Switzerland to learn the French language. After Neuchâtel, I went to Sierre, also in the French part of Switzerland. And after that, I went to the German part of Switzerland. And from there, I went to Africa. From Africa, I thought, well, let's try out the Bermuda Islands. I tried out the Bermuda Islands for four and a half years in the Princess Hotel in Bermuda. And uh, I couldn't quite have make up my mind to I got back to Europe. Or I thought, well, maybe I'm trying out the States I might regret never have came here, and uh, I applied in this hotel, and I'm here since the last 10 years. What a background. Chef Gerst needs it to supervise the massive cooking staff. They provide food to five restaurants and all kinds of conventions and banquets. It's a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week operation. Their output is amazing. They produce more than 102,000 gallons of sauces and soup each year. 299,000 cups of coffee a month, 140,000 rolls per week, and 12,000 biscuits and 4,000 Danish a day. But volume is only part of the story. Artistry is the other. Meet Chef Joe Birch, head of the bakery department. This is a man who creates gems every day. Joe Birch is more than just a chef. He's also a food sculptor. This is his work. Beautifully fine carved figures made of chocolate. They're used as decorative pieces for special occasions or conventions at Opryland. They're almost too beautiful to eat. I learned in Switzerland, I make apprenticeship over in Switzerland. And uh, cho chocolate is something, you know, uh, you work with over there. It's a, it's a place for chocolate, you know. I like it, you know. I like to eat it and taste it sometimes too, you know. The show's right here. <laughs> Joe also supervises the baking of all pastries, a dazzling array of desserts that few people can resist. All this wonderful food is consumed by people who come to Opryland from all over the world. Many are here for conventions and meetings. Opryland is one of the top convention hotels in the world. We have halls and rooms that will accommodate groups of up to 4,400 people. In fact, we have more meeting and exhibit space than any other hotel in the country. That's one of the reasons why we're among the largest hotels in the United States, covering more than 48 acres under one roof. 
This size, coupled with our special service and great location, makes Opryland an excellent convention hotel. We've had a good, the good fortune, uh, right from the beginning, of being in a very central location. I think clearly one of the greatest advantages Opryland Hotel has had is that we are located uh, in Nashville, Tennessee, which allows us, to, which makes a, the population, over 50 percent of the United States population is within 600 miles of our hotel. That allows a lot of conventions to attract more people because many of them don't even have to fly and can find themselves within a one-day drive uh, to come to the hotel. These conventioneers put in a lot of work but they also want to have some fun. We've already talked about many of the fascinating things they can do right here in this hotel. And a little later, we'll show you some more. But we can't forget that the hotel is part of the whole Opryland complex. Just a short bus ride away, you'll find some of the greatest attractions in the world. This is the Opryland theme park. It covers 120 acres and offers all the rides, food, and entertainment that anyone could ever want. Once you've done all this, along with our many other rides, you'll probably be ready to slow it down a bit. So try some of the theme park's varied restaurants, game areas, and quaint shops. These shops are a delight for those who just want to browse around and meet some talented artists and craftsmen. Opryland Theme Park has something for everyone, including great live music throughout the park. It's a place you'll never forget. My first time here in San Diego, California is terrific. More than I ever expected. And I'm from Wonder, Oregon, and I'm having a We've won a horse so far. By far, <laughs> by far it's the horse. No doubt in my entire mind. Winning this horse at Auburn is just awesome. This is the best. I mean, I've been many places, but ask him, this is the best place. In 1985, the General Jackson steamboat slid into the water for the first time. A few months later, it was officially christened in a gala ceremony at Nashville's Riverfront Park. It's now one of Opryland's biggest attractions. Morning. How you doing, Hi, yeah. sir? Hope you enjoy Good. your cruise. Welcome aboard. A ride on the General Jackson is a trip back in time to a period when the great showboats graced the rivers of America the General Jackson truly upholds that tradition. It meanders gently through the quiet bends of the Cumberland River. It's a treat just to sit outside and see some of the most beautiful scenery around. Inside, you can have dinner and see a great stage show at the Victorian Theater. You can't miss on the General Jackson. It's one of the highlights of any trip to Opryland. Nashville 95 FM is our name. Our call letters are WSM FM when you hear country music. It's Nashville 95 FM. It's also 2.30, and here's Waylon Jennings. Country music, the cradle of Opryland. It's everywhere on WSM radio and at the Opryland Music Group, where some of the greatest country hits are written, produced, and recorded. Opryland is also home to the Nashville Network, one of the fastest growing, most popular cable television networks in America. But the original bedrock of country music is still the grand old Opry. The Opry is now staged in this beautiful state-of-the-art theater, just moments from the Opryland Hotel. But its roots go back to 1925 at WSM Radio. It all started with an 80-year-old fiddle player named Uncle Jimmy Thompson. He was the first performer on a show called the WSM Barn Dance. The announcer for that show was George Hay, the 
legendary figure known as the Solemn Old Judge. Little did George Hay and Uncle Jimmy Thompson know that their modest program would have a gigantic impact on American music. For the next 18 years, the Opry became one of Nashville's biggest attractions. It got so popular that it had to keep moving into bigger facilities to accommodate its fans. In 1943, the Opry settled into the Ryman Auditorium in downtown Nashville. It stayed there for the next 31 years. The Ryman is now a major tourist attraction with guided tours for the country faithful. The Ryman was a great old place, but eventually the Opry needed a bigger, more modern home. So a new theater was built and it was dedicated by President Richard Nixon in 1974, along with Nashville legend Roy Acuff. I'll stay here and try to learn how to use the yo-yo. You'll go up and be president. Roy. <laughs> the Opry now is bigger and better than ever. There are up to eight shows a week during the peak summer months, and they feature the greatest names in country music. And many of those country stars often visit the Opryland Hotel. You might see them at Ramones of California, a hairstyling salon that caters both to celebrities and everyday people. On this day, Jeannie C. Riley is getting her hair styled by Ramon. Miss Carolyn, girl. Magic. Carolyn. Yeah, I guess I'm a glutton for punishment, but I want long hair one more time. Ramon has become a celebrity in Nashville. He not only styles the hair of the stars, but he's also good friends with many of them. He's become so popular that he appeared on the Grand Ole Opry. Ramon was born and raised in California, but he's made it big in Nashville. I am uh, very proud of the artists that I do and being affiliated with the country music industry, I consider myself very lucky. It's, uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, you sort of get involved in their career to a degree, and of course, the way they want to appear uh, on camera. They call it personal appearance, that's what we Mike, when we go on stage, we're making a personal appearance. It involves more than our voices and our music. It involves uh, our looks as well. And if you're there at the right time, you can catch celebrities like Jeannie when they leave Ramones and even get an autograph and some nice conversation. Well, hi. Hello. Hi. hi. We got a bunch here, don't we? <laughs> All right. We would like your autograph. Well, sure. You have a pen? I, I can have use a pen. Oh, put my it. suitcase down. It looks like I'm... Moving in the Opryland Hotel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's your I'm name? the only guy here. I want a hug. <laughs> the country tradition is a big part of the Opryland Hotel. There's a Grand Ole Opry Hall of Fame with pictures of all the stars who've been part of Opry history. There's also a Hall of Fame for the country radio announcers, the people who've been so instrumental in spreading the country gospel. And if you're at that Radio Hall of Fame, keep your eyes open, because right next door is a fully equipped radio studio. And on some days, you might see celebrities Lori Ann Crook and Charlie Chase of the Nashville Network. They're using the studio to record part of their radio program. That's the music of Keith Whitley and I'm Over You. And what a great song it is, debuting at number 37. This next man is coming back strong after a couple of months off from his hectic touring schedule. During his time off, Earl Thomas Conley wasn't taking a leisure holiday. Rather, he was undergoing medical treatment for a seriously strained throat. That's right, his singing box was Crook shot. and Chase are a big part of the Nashville scene. But Nashville is captured in a different way in another part of the hotel. A series of giant murals chronicle the city's rich history. They give us an intimate view of old Nashville in all its glory. It's a great way to spend some relaxing, quiet time in a charming part of the hotel. Opryland's southern charm is also evident right outside its doors. You'll see horses quietly moving about. They're frequently ridden by security rangers. It's one of those touches that makes Opryland special to the people who stay here. They're really glad to see somebody out here on a horse. Most people like horses and they like to come out, talk to the people that work with them and pet the horses, things like that. It's just another way of making things special. The people at Opryland are always looking for new and exciting ideas. Things like Country Christmas, a five week celebration that's become one of the most memorable events of the year. The hotel comes alive with more than a million Christmas lights 
and a beautiful display of holiday decorations. There's also a country Christmas art, craft, and antique fair, elegant holiday dinners, Christmas caroling, and a special down-home country music celebration. Music is something that attracts almost everyone to Opryland. But many of our guests are also interested in exercise and sports. For them, we offer three beautiful outdoor pools, an exercise room, six tennis courts, and one of the finest golf courses anywhere, designed by PGA professional Larry Nelson. Well, Larry Nelson has created just a great package for us here. The, uh, the 18 holes of uh, the Springhouse Golf Club are a combination of 18 unique uh, challenges that each and every golfer is going to uh, undertake. The, the unique jewel of our facility is our 43,000 square foot clubhouse. We have the ability to, uh, to accommodate meetings of up to 150 people in uh, two separate distinct meeting rooms. So we can have our clubhouse dining room and lounge to handle the requirements of the day-to-day -day golfing guest, as well as two meeting functions going on at the same time. If you're not interested in golf or other sports, no problem. How about shopping? There are 18 unique shops spread throughout the hotel. Whether it's a gift for those back home or just something you feel like buying, you'll find it at the Opryland Hotel. It's a hotel that has something for everyone. And it's no wonder the rooms are constantly filled. From the presidential suite to the nearly 2,000 other rooms, Opryland has one of the highest occupancy rates of any hotel in the United States. The people here have one goal. Perfection. Uh, we want every, on a scale of one to 10, let's do it that way. We want this hotel to be a 10. Every corner that you look in should be immaculate, down to the smallest detail. That's important. When that guest walks in our front door, he should be able to feel it. He doesn't even have to see it, he has to feel it. It's clean, it smells good, it's beautiful. It was just all new to us. We had not experienced anything like this in a hotel before, and we have just enjoyed it every night. From the laser show. You know, I, I had heard of Opera Land for years. I've wanted to come here for years. And uh, we can't wait to get back home. We've got three boys to bring them back because we've had such a good time. I've, I've been here 13 months, and everyone is friendly in every department. It's not something that you're forced to do. It comes natural to a lot of people. I enjoy working here. I think it's absolutely fabulous. I, the scenery is incredible, and it's just so warm and wonderful. The people are great, and they've taken terrific care of us. People who care. It's a way of life here. It's the reason our guests keep coming back again and again. The people make Opryland special. They make it fun, exciting, and memorable. It's so much more than just a place to stay. It's an experience. This hotel has one overriding goal, to satisfy the customer in every single way. That's why we're constantly changing, always innovating, and never complacent. We're dedicated to making this the greatest hotel in the world. We want you to come back here for years and years. We want you to feel like a part of our family. It's an amazing success story, a partnership between a hotel and its very special guests, a commitment to quality that never ends, a dedication to service that is remarkable. It all comes together in one distinctive place, the Opryland Hotel.